to get a job. Brought to you by Sandalink and the Battle Living Corporation of America. Chapter One. Come on board for success. Hi, George. He hasn't had a job for quite some time. He was a public servant. Funds are low. He's on the door. to stop being a drain on society. He's got to get a job. He needs a new beginning. So what to do? Should he go casual? Why, folks, he looks unemployed. No, no, too formal. You look like a boss. Too theatrical, too artistic. Work is not a frivolous matter. Oh well, I guess that'll have to do. George is on his way. Well, almost. What's this? A letter from his mother, his grade 7 report, and references by other people on the dole. George is on his way. Why not try his local shopping center, the hub of vibrant community life? That's not you, buddy. You're on the road to job recovery. Employers are crying out for folks like you, George. Never take that first rejection too personally. Even when it is. Chapter 2. Reporting to your Job Network Office. George has received a friendly letter suggesting he attends his local Job Network Office. All he has to do is attend and bring with him his ID number, bank balance, name of bank, last employer's name, name of all de facto partners, three character references, a police check. Strip search may be required. The network employs the latest in motivational techniques. George is in safe hands. Off he goes. That's right, George. Presentation counts. Privatized job network offices are part of your local community. Accessible to all and conveniently located in all suburbs. Building a future for everybody. Unfortunately, this one is closed. No job today, but he's learned a valuable lesson that presentation counts. George has to find another job network office. He hasn't got a car, and the job network is a long way away. Oh, bother. Not to worry, George. Public transport is second to none. You'll get there in no time at all. George has caught the train, but it doesn't stop at his destination, so he'll have to walk. Hey, folks, let's hope he doesn't get lost. The job seeker is like a pilgrim, traveling to the maker of job opportunities. He must be prepared to keep on track and to fit in, no matter what the cost to his personal comfort. George has a long way to go. Oh no! George has taken a shortcut! Think you know best, buddy? Bad idea! You're sure to go for a fall. George is now really lost, and he's already late for that vital appointment. What to do? Why not ask one of the helpful local residents? They are sure to know the way. Oh no, the mention of the job network has enraged this poor loser. There are just some folks you can't help. George is not looking ready. He's tired and exhausted. And frankly, folks, he looks, well, old. 
He's not ready for work. No employer would want that. George should know that presentation counts. See, the network won't deal with George. They think he's unkempt and uncool. Lucky's got another appointment. Try again, buddy. Chapter 3. Signing your returning to work agreement. Another day and a fresh start. George is determined to be on time. Job seekers must show initiative. Why not borrow somebody's bicycle? We're sure the owner won't mind. At last, George arrives on time for his job network appointment. sense of optimism in the room. These folks can't wait to get into the workforce. The job center folks welcome George to his job future. Job search staff are highly trained to provide a friendly environment for the sincere job seeker. George explains, it's like this. I've got an appointment for 10 o'clock. Can I go straight in? You got it wrong, George. You'll have to wait your turn. Take a seat, pal. Time to bond with the other job seekers. Why not form a jobs club? George will have to wait his turn. Don't fidget, buddy. Relax and think of your great future. The wait may be some time, but no worries. George has plenty of time. After all, he's unemployed. What else would he be doing? It's nearly closing time, and Vera shows him in. It's been a busy day. No time for politeness. Sit back. Take a seat, pal. No time to waste. Oh, well. What do you want to do, George? George tells of his love of poetry and words. A career in advertising, perhaps. Perhaps not. And then his is love of nature in all its glory. Trees, flowers, and the irresistible cuddliness of small animals with whom George identifies. Oh, he weeps for the trees. Get he plants and he grows his own vegetables. Then there's his love of song and music and the great artistic integrity of his singing. Sign there, George. Sign the farm, buddy. It's sign or starve. It's sign or starve. It's sign or starve. George has signed the return to work farm now. He has to adjust. He can no longer sponge on the taxpayer. Today is the first day of the rest of your working life. A life of service to other people. Got the message yet, George? You gotta get a job.